In this video series, I'm going to explain brain hemisphere integration, what it does and how it affects your child. As I explained in one of my previous videos, I believe that the underlying causes for children struggling in school is retained primitive reflexes and poor brain hemisphere integration. So brain hemisphere integration has to do with the communication between the left and right hemispheres of the brain. What quite often happens in kids that have learning struggles or have social or behavioral problems is that they have an unbalanced brain. They have an overdeveloped hemisphere and an underdeveloped hemisphere. And what that does to a child is it causes them not to have great communication between the left and right hemispheres of the brain and we can't make sense of the information we're receiving. You remember that I said that the primitive reflex, the ATNR, has to do with developing cross-lateral movements. Now the brain and the body work together, but they work in a bilateral system. And what I mean by that is the movements that we make with our body on our right side, whether it's information we take in through our right ear, our right eye, how we use our right hand or our right leg, all of that information is sent across to the left hemisphere of the brain and vice versa for the left side. Everything that we take in on our left side goes across to our right side. Now the reason this becomes important is that if for any reason we ended up with a block like we would if we had a retained ATNR, it doesn't allow information to cross from the left and right hemispheres of the brain. The brain is a very efficient computer, but it's also slightly impatient. So let me try to explain this. Let's assume that we have a retained ATNR reflex. So we have this invisible barrier or block that's now running between the left and right hemispheres of the brain. So now our messages are not passing across as they should. So what happens now is the information that we're taking in from our environment through our senses, whether it's through our touch, hearing, vision, the information that we're taking from one side of our body and needs to transfer over to the other side for our brain, this invisible barrier is blocking it, slowing it down, or making it so that the messages are dropped or not getting through. This is if this starts to happen too much, the brain decides that this is an ineffective system and it will stop using those messages. The problem with that is with the use it or lose it model that the brain functions on, if we are not using it, it starts to deteriorate. So now what happens is, let's assume that it's messages from our right side that are not getting to the left hemisphere of our brain. So now we've stopped using that information. The problem is, is the brain grows through constantly being stimulated and developed. So now, because the left side of the brain is not receiving that information, it starts to become underdeveloped because the right side of the brain is having to take over the tasks that the left brain should have been doing, it becomes overdeveloped. Now we have a communication problem. One of the best ways I try to explain this to people is, I want you to imagine that you have a lamp. So the lamp is in perfectly good working condition. The light bulb in it is in perfect condition. The cord that runs from the lamp, perfect. The plug on the end of the cord, perfect. And now we have a plug-in in the wall. The electricity is coming to that plug. Everything in its parts are perfect. Now I want you to imagine that the plug-in, the outlet on the wall, has shrunk to half of its size. There's still nothing wrong with the plug-in. The electricity is still coming to it. It's just half of its size. Now I want you to try to take your perfectly good working lamp and plug it into the plug so that we can have light. It won't work not because there's anything wrong with any of the components we have, they just don't fit. We just can't transfer that electricity from the wall to the lamp. That's what's happening when we have an unbalanced brain. Not that one side of the brain has shrunk to half its size, that's not what happens at all. The problem is, is that the information that's coming across is not lining up. We can't transfer it to the other side. So the good news about this is that there's no actual defect. Everything still works fantastically. We just have to get it to line up and work together. So how do we do this? Well, as I said, the brain is developed by the body. It's developed by being stimulated, 
engaged, challenged, and that's what develops the brain. Now, now one of the greatest things about the last 10 years of science is that we've discovered that we can change the brain. We can affect it by the way we use it, how we stimulate it, and how we engage it. So, when it comes to brain hemisphere integration training, the magic in this kind of training is that we only work to stimulate and develop the weak hemisphere. Because obviously if we stimulate all of the senses on both sides of the body, we're stimulating both sides of the brain. Well that doesn't help us cut down on the discrepancy between the overdeveloped and underdeveloped side. So the magic is in only working on the weak side. We want to give that side a chance to develop and get stronger and to not necessarily grow, but to catch up to the other side so that it can communicate effectively across the brain. So how do we do it? Well, we have to determine which side of your brain is the weak hemisphere. Now the way we do this is we go through what I call a master hemisphere checklist. And this checklist is amazingly accurate. The As I mentioned before, each side of the brain is responsible for certain skills, tasks, and characteristics. And simply by going through the master hemisphere checklist, you will recognize your child in that list from where they struggle and where they're strong, how they behave, and how they're doing academically. That will give you the best indication of which side your child's brain is weak and which side is strong. And from there, we develop a program that only addresses their weak side. So our brain is truly developed by our body. How we use our body, how we take in information through our senses, all of that develops our brain. In the program, we develop the weak brain hemisphere by working on exercises that stimulate, engage, and challenge the five senses, plus two more that I wanna tell you about. The first is the vestibular system. Without getting too complicated, the vestibular system is a system in our inner ear that basically lets us know where we are in space, if we're in motion, and in what direction we're going. Our vestibular system is responsible for our balance and our sense or perception of movement. So if we're moving forward or if we're moving backwards, if we're right side up or we're upside down, it's our vestibular system that lets us know that information. The second additional sense that's very important in the development of the brain is something called proprioception. This is the understanding of where our body starts and stops. It's knowing and feeling where our body is without actually seeing it. Now, it's receptors deep in the muscles that send messages to the brain. So if you were to close your eyes, you would still know where your hand is or where your foot is. This is really important because it lets children know, one, where they are in space, it allows them to know how much force they need to use on things, and it helps them develop their muscles. So now that I've explained those two, when we do brain hemisphere integration training with kids, it requires us to use all of those senses. So we will use things like vision exercises, we'll use things like pushing and pulling exercises because that's that proprioception, knowing where our body starts and stops. We use exercises for spinning that allows us to develop the vestibular system. We don't ever want to push a child past where they're comfortable, but we do want to sort of challenge them enough that the brain has to do some work to develop new neural pathways and actually develop the brain to be better.